Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Welcome to New Life in Christ Christian Center broadcast. My name is Gerald Walton. I am your host and I'm the elder and pastor at New Life in Christ Christian Center. Welcome today. We greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're thankful for you today. Appreciate you listening in. May God richly bless you. We have a great message, message of the kingdom of God that will bless your spirit. Amen. We want to first uh, share with you about a little bit about New Life in Christ Christian Center. We're a Christian fellowship where Jesus Christ is the center of our lives. The Bible says he's the head of the church and he's the head of the body and he is the head of all principality and power. So we give honor and glory to him and we bless his holy name. Our message is to lift up the name of Jesus. So today, uh, if you'd like to know more about New Life and Christ Christian Center, you can call us at 513-257-9121 or you can call my cell number at 513-545-1705 for prayer or if you'd like to connect with us because we are part of the body of Christ, oh, please feel free to do so. We love to have you. Uh, we have, first, we have uh, conference calls and we have uh, Zoom calls at the current time. So we believe in God for everything. If you want to be a part of an exciting, dynamic fellowship, believe in God for everything. Because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. I believe New Life in Christ Christian Center is the place for you. Uh, so... That being said, uh, we have a great message to share with you. I want to exhort you first. Uh, this time in the word of God and is found, uh, it says here, rather, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. So be encouraged. He who have begun and work in you is faithful to complete it. Amen. Okay. Well, we're going to read a word of prayer over your life. Uh, biblically speaking, the word of God I'm going to believe God for you with this prayer to the Ephesians, Paul, who was an apostle. He went to different regions of the world and uh, he prayed this for the Ephesians. And I'm praying or believing God for this same prayer for you. And it says, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, it says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love for all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, 
that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. May God bless you with that reading, that prayer reading. Amen. Now, Father, we thank you for the word of God today. And as we go forward by faith, Pray for any of those who are listening and watching. They have not received Christ as their Lord and Savior, Lord. We pray that they do so, for it's urgent that they do so, Lord. And we just thank you. We also thank you for the labors of the harvest. And we thank you and we pray for them as well. To reach out toward others so that others may be saved and set free by the power of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, today's message is entitled, and it's going to bless you because it has to do with God's people, and it is regarding rest. Rest. There is a rest for the people of God. So, Entitled, this message is entitled, so that you can understand it better, is entitled, Rest in God. There is a rest for the people of God. And this is right now. This is a now faith substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. This is a now uh, current word. Rest in God. Say, why do I need to rest in God? Because God has his plan for you. Plan to prosper you. Plan to bless you. And plan to give you an expected end. So the rest of God uh, is valuable and God wants you to receive it by faith. And faith means believing God. Of uh, Second Timothy 1 9 reads, Who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose, and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Amen. So this is God being the center of your life being the influence of your life, directing your life so that you can rest. And if we read Exodus 33, 14, it says, The Lord replied, replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. So now we see the word presence, the presence of God. And the rest comes with the presence of God. So if we read Hebrews, we can learn about this rest, the rest of God, for the people of God. And let's read that. If you have your Bibles, go to Ephesians chapter 4. And I would really make a note of this because this is a... a a Sabbath day rest, a rest from all your labors, and a rest that enters into his rest that he has for you. And God's rest has to do with the peace of God, the righteousness of God, the joy of God living on the inside of you. 
For it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And neither shall I say, lo, here or lo, there, for the kingdom of God is within you. So in Hebrews chapter 4, we read verse 1, starting with Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn, sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. And it says, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore, it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. God is saying, hear my voice today. Hear my voice. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. But here, when you enter into the rest of God, you're able to hear God's voice. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest for the people of God. Amen. And it says, For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. And then it says, Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the tents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So this rest is more than just merely inactivity. It follows with a satisfactory completion of task. That's what the definition of rest is. The people of God entering to God's rest cease from their own labors. But it also mentions a labor to enter in that rest, not just doing a lot of work, you know, and then just not doing nothing. Now that's more of a refreshing of your soul, your mind, you know, playing golf or, you know, or musing at the, pre uh, uh, or appreciating the presence of God by musing at his creation. But we're talking about, it mentions about let us labor to enter to this rest. And that means spending time in God's word, laboring in the word. It will create the rest of God for you. And do it in love and faith, or faith which worketh by love. So we're talking today about uh, a spiritual rest, which is salvation and a gift from God. And it's for God's children as a result of the finished work of Jesus. Amen. And therefore, it introduces us to the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you labor to enter into the rest of God and understand the kingdom. 
Amen. And uh, God gives us instructions in verse 11. I'll read again. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, the rest of God. Least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So in order to enter into the rest of God, you must be a believer or you must believe. Amen. And people can't enter, they cannot enter into this rest with unbelief. So that means if they're worried, if they're leaning to their own understanding, if they're working so God will love them. God wants you to experience his finished work with Jesus on the cross so that you can bring his presence and that the spirit of the Lord can lead you and guide you and show up in you and whatever you do and wherever you go. Amen. So it says again, let us labor to enter into God's rest, the finished works of God. Jesus said the works is finished. So now we, we are to experience the kingdom of God in a mighty way. The church is. The church is to know and understand the kingdom of God and how Jesus, the Christ, the king, is to influence our lives, cover us up, Amen. And be our everything. Amen. Be our everything. So how do we enter into the rest of God? And we read that we must labor. It means spend time with God. You labor with God by spending time with God. It's, it's a, a labor of rest. Now, you can uh, labor and work hard. And, and never spend no time with God, and therefore you won't be blessed. Because the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's the gift of God, not of works, at least any man should boast. So you can work yourself and work yourself and never spend time with God, and you miss the purpose of God for your life. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, do it unto the Lord. There's your freedom. There's your freedom. Because God, God wants to show you a more excellent way, which is the kingdom, his kingdom of righteousness and peace and joy, and full of life, amen, the life of God, which is the light of God which is the life of God, which is the presence of God. Amen. So how do we labor to enter into the rest? Number one, by receiving God's word with meekness. And if we read James chapter one. It talks about receiving. Amen. We're to receive the word of God with meekness. James chapter 1, verse 22, it says, uh, and 21 and 22, it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfality of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. And be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. By being a doer, you're blessed. Blessed are they that put their trust in the Lord. And being a doer of God's word brings rest. I'm talking about a spirit rest, spiritual rest, okay? Not a, physical rest comes with it. But a spiritual rest, peace, not stressed out, not trying to manage stress. Don't even get, get it out of your life. Worry. Fear, uncertainty about tomorrow. Get it out of your life by trusting God. Blessed are they that put their trust in the Lord. That's the rest and peace. What comes with rest is peace. Peace that surpasses all man's understanding. And it is to rule in your hearts. The, the peace of God is to rule 
amen, govern you. So you do things in, in faith and peace and rest. Not in fear and worry. God will fight your battles. God will be with you. Amen. And so we have to learn his ways. Amen. So number two, through prayer, uh, we can enter into rest through prayer. There's all prayer, which is worship, praise, intercession. Um, then there's uh, a prayer of agreement. Amen. The prayer of consecration. Uh, God wants us to be able to administer and, and bless him with it. Bless, worship God in the beauty of holiness and his presence of peace and rest will come upon you because you have elevated where he needs to be elevated because he sits on the throne and he rules and reigns forever. So God will want you to have that peace in whatever you do down here. He don't want you to forget about it. Forget about he who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, blessing and glory and honor and power and thanksgiving. No, he wants you to experience it here on earth as it is in heaven. But prayer, if we go to Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Always give thanks. After you pray, give thanks. Not just for your dinner or your lunch, but everything, in everything, give thanks. And you will begin to experience the rest of God when you give thanks to God. Just for his goodness. Just thank him for the word and praise him for the word of God in your heart. And as you speak the word of God, say, thank you, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you. You'll enter into the rest that God has for you. That's believing when you give thanks to God. That's confidence, but that's believing and trusting God. Blessed are they who puts their trust in God. You're blessed when you trust God. And when you trust God, you give thanks. And then also by renewing of your mind, how do you enter into God's rest for you? Your mind must be renewed. You cannot have the same mind, the same way you think, the same way you act. You, you have to renew your mind to have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is in his word. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So you enter into your rest by renewing your mind and thinking on those things that are honest, those things that are just, those things that are pure, and those things that are lovely which is the word of God, those things that are of a good report. Also, you enter into God's rest by meditation and reflecting and giving God your undivided attention. That's in Proverbs 4, 20, verse 20 through 22, where it says, uh, let's go there. In the benefit or the blessing, which is the rest of God, what comes with the rest of God is the peace of God. And the presence of God and the life is life with the with the uh, the rest of God. There's so much life. And when you resting in God, because you cease from your labors and trying to make it happen, trying to work it out, trying to understand, trying to figure it out. You ain't going to get no rest. You, you're going to be uh, uh, you're going to just have anxiety. Amen. And you're going to be worrying. And we're to trust in the Lord at all times and let his praise be continually in our mouths. But in Proverbs chapter 4, we'll go there because it has to do with rest. This, this, when you labor and do this, you will enter into God's rest too. Because we're talking about how do you enter into the rest of God? You cease from your labors. That's one thing. Trying to figure it out. Trying to analyze it. You know. Trying to intellectualize it and everything. Here it goes. Proverbs. Amen. 4. 20 it says here. 
My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. So when you enter into the rest of God, uh, the word of God becomes life and health to all your flesh. Spiritual medicine even. Spiritual medicine. Daily, uh, daily bread. Bread of heaven. Amen. Also, when you enter into the rest of God, and all, it says reflection, reflecting who God is and musing. Finding a place where you can just meditate and you can reflect on the goodness of the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good because his mercy endure forever. Now, if you're so busy or being a busybody, you're not going to be able to experience the rest or the presence of God. God wants his presence to dwell in your temple so that everything you do is for his glory and honor and praise. Amen. Well, we got to get to that point. We got to grow and become mature and develop. Amen. And that's why God wants to perfect that which lacks in us. He really does. And we have to receive what he has for us. And he wants to align us up under his authority, under his rule, amen, and so that he can govern us and influence our lives from this time forth and forever, amen. And also, how do we enter into the rest? By studying the word of God, and we'll go to 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, amen. Let's read that. It says, 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. God wants you to come into the truth of his word, but you have to study so you can come into the truth of his word. And with the truth of God's word, it will make you free. Amen. You will rest when you know the truth because it's going to make you free. And you're going to cease from your labors, your labors, or even somebody else's labor. You're going to enter into rest and experience peace and experience the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. So what are the benefits? Uh, number one, we have to realize the solution of or the way we enter into the rest is by having faith in Christ Jesus and understanding the love of the Father. Now, we, these blessings that come with rest, what comes with rest? Dominion, where it says, sin shall not have dominion over you, but grace and truth. And also the benefit is that God's going to give you authority and you're going to know how to use the authority that's been delegated to you. To whom many have received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. So authority, which is revelation being revealed to you, will help you rest in God. And also knowing that when you reign with Christ, the revelation of, being, of reigning with Christ, you suffer with him, though. Because all who live godly will suffer persecution. But the Spirit of God will be so strong that you will overcome and you will be above and not beneath and you'll be a, a, the head and not the tail when you go through it. Because that's what reigning means. Amen. In Christ. In spite of all obstacles. Hallelujah. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. And then uh, when you rest in God, you, you're able to fulfill God's purpose effectively, efficiently. It's called growing up and becoming perfected, which is mature 
Amen. You understand God's calling. You understand God's purpose. You under God's, uh, understand God's destiny and grace that's been given to you by faith in Christ Jesus. God will give you the grace to do this and for you to have this. It is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And also, when you enter into the rest of God, which is the presence of God, you're going to be able to bless others. Not, it's just not for you. Because there's a lot of people in turmoil, uh, speeding, running through traffic lights, run, uh, passing other people up. You know, it's like, I got to get there. I got to get there. I got to hurry up and get there. I'm, you know, all this fear driven, you know, stress driven. See, we're to be love driven with faith which worketh by God's love. The love of Christ, Christ driven. Amen. And it's totally opposite from the world, totally opposite, which is the kingdom of God. So I just want to admonish you that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 through 13, there were two types of unbelief. One is the lack of faith. And so if there's a lack of faith, that means you haven't heard the word of God. And faith means believing God and his word. And number three, uh, one, that's called apostia. And the second unbelief mentioned in uh, Hebrews 4, verses 1 through 13, is called apathia, which means disobedient and rebellion. So you don't want neither one of those. Because if you're operating un, un, uh, in unbelief by lack of faith and trust in God, or being disobedient and rebellious, your life is going to be upside down. You're going to join uh, the life of those who are, are unbelievers. And God will not will it so. God will want you to, to have the benefit and the blessings of rest and his peace and his righteousness and his joy. Even while things are going on, because it's his kingdom. It's not of this world. So that's why, important, that's why it's so important to understand the rest of God. It's the kingdom of God in its, in its foundational form. Amen. Even during a storm or a trial or test, God wants you to operate in the spirit of rest, which is peace. Joy, righteousness, ult ultimate confidence in who God is in every situation you face when you go to him or draw nigh to him because he'll draw nigh to you. So I want to encourage everyone to fulfill or to receive and walk in the rest of God because there is a rest for the people of God. And this rest is the is a Sabbath rest, but it's a kingdom rest. The kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent, we take it by force. We enter in the rest of God by believing and trusting God to be provider, vindicator, to be our all in all. And so, therefore, we need his presence in our lives. And we will spend time, amen, to labor to enter into that rest that he has for his people. I hope this blessed you and, uh, and blessed you and your family. Uh, pray without ceasing. Be not weary in well-doing. When due season, God will bless you. Amen. And seek and hunger after his righteousness. Seek and hunger after holiness. Seek and hunger his presence in your life. So that you can bless yourself, your family, and all those you meet with the blessing of God all on your life. All on you. Saturated in you. Amen. 
So have a blessed day until we meet again. Grace and peace and blessings be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Till we meet again, God bless you.